I want the Michigan City to prove once and for all the earth is curved. What the Michigan City because on a clear day you can see all the way to downtown Chicago about 30 miles away across Lake Michigan. Here's where I took my pictures uh, from the beach. This is maybe 20 feet above lake level. And if you look out there uh, past the pier and the breakwater you can see downtown Chicago. Camry has about a 28 to 1 uh, zoom capability. On the far left is uh, the uh, Sears Tower, now called Willis Tower, then uh, the Standard Oil Building, I don't think it's called it anymore, uh, Trump Tower, and uh, on the far right is the uh, Hancock Building. Now this is a video that I took, and the video would be hard to, to fake. Uh, when I went up to the Observation Tower, about a quarter mile away, I was on top of a tall hill, so I had to do a lot of climbing to get up there. The building itself is six stories high. I think there were 92 steps to climb from the first floor to the top floor. On the way up, there's a window, so I took some pictures out towards the pier to get a feel for about how high up it is. <coughs> there's the uh, pier down there, and way off in the distance that looks like an island is Chicago. Now you can see a lot more of it, but uh, again, it looks like an island in, in the water. Here's a picture I took off the internet. I drew two lines on there. The top line is about where the horizon appears from the beach pictures. The lower line is about where the horizon appears from the observation tower. If the earth was not curved from what you can see from Michigan City, Chicago would have to be underwater. Here are some other pictures I borrowed off the internet of downtown Chicago taken from Michigan City from various elevations. Sometimes you can see more of Chicago due to a mirage effect. I'm not going to go into discussion of mirages. Uh, they exist, uh, but it's a rare event. This is a picture representing an observer in Michigan City looking at the Willis Tower. That faint blue line going from the observer's eye to the Willis Tower represents his line of sight that is not obstructed by the curve of the earth. The uh, distance is roughly 30 miles. It's not exact, but I'm using that number. The uh, distance along the curvature of the earth is uh, about one foot more than it would be if you drew a line straight through the earth to the observer. It seems counterintuitive, but uh, if you've ever strung a bow, you'll understand that. This is the 30 mile viewing drawn to scale. Her bump in the left side is the Sears Tower. The three lines, you have the line of sight, the curvature of the earth, and a straight line between the Sears Tower and the observer. The observer is just a dot on the right side, you can't see him at all. I enlarged the drawing quite a bit to show the true scale of the Willis Tower and 30 miles to Michigan City. It won't fit on one screen so I scan across it. The blue line on top is the observer's line of sight to the lowest part of the Willis Tower that he can see that is not obstructed by the curve of the earth. The curved line is the curve of the earth and below that is a straight line between the base of the Willis Tower and the observer. This line helps to highlight the earth's curvature. Then there is this thing called refraction. Refraction due to the atmosphere, which bends light downward slightly. But before I get into that, let's review Optics 101, how a lens works. A lens that creates an image has convex surfaces that bend the light to a focal point. All light coming in perpendicular to the lens is focused to a point thus allowing mean-spirited little boys to cook bugs with magnifying glasses. This is your basic drawing showing a lens creating an image. For this we have, we have a pole with a cone on top, sort of a spear. Light that hits point big A is scattered in all directions radially. We are going to look at two of these rays. The one that comes in perpendicular to the lens is bent and goes through the focal point after the lens. 
another array travels through the virtual focal point before the lens, hits the lens, and leaves it perpendicular to the lens. This second ray intersects the first ray at point little a, and actually all the other light coming from point big A and hitting the lens ends up at point little a. This occurs for all the points on the spear big A to big B and creates an upside down image at points little a to little b, which could be film, a digital camera, CCD, or the retina of the eye. The drawing of mine of an observer in Michigan City viewing the Willis Tower did not take into account refraction. Refraction is discussed on Tom Chester's website listed here. To summarize what is important is that refraction bends light downward, usually. The net effect of refraction is to reduce the amount the Willis Tower or any other elevation is blocked by the curve of the Earth by about 15%. Essentially, it makes the skyscrapers appear higher than they are. So a straight line from the observer, tangent to the curvature of the lake, to the Willis Tower, would indicate that the lower 600 feet of the Willis Tower should not be visible. However, light from the 520-foot level will just curve over the Earth's curvature reaching the observer. Another person has a YouTube video where he claims that the reason the bottom of Chicago buildings are not visible is because the refraction bends the light into the lake. Thus, my primer on how lenses work and how light is scattered when it hits a surface. If the earth was flat, some of the light hitting the lowest levels of downtown Chicago would radiate up and then curve down to the observer, and he could see Chicago down to the lakefront on any clear day, not just at exceptional times when a mirage forms.